Anyway, so up more and up. Right, so the last time I spoke about objects, right? We said that we create an object by using the first declaring it as var. Let's see how the user open and close left and right parentheses in parentheses or bracket parentheses curly bracket parentheses. This variable is what? A window. No. Nope. Yeah. Check the console.log, which is coming from here. Alright. Oh, come on. I'm not sure. So. It is coming from here. Alright. And this variable is what? You can check the console. Let's bring it up a little bit. If you check the console, what do we have? The actual object itself. Can you see? Yeah. Are you sure? Alright. Let's go right here. Let's just say you want to have access to the first thing, right? Dot what? same method by using the same dot notation. For example, by saying that if you do user dot get to right, we know how to use first of all let us do it this way. Let's do console dot user dot get full name right without any of the parentheses. What do we get? We get what? Function. Right? So we know it's what? We know that user the get full name is what? Function. Right. So just comment all of this out. Right. And say function get. get this to work. Right. So then we do user dot get full name and then what? Open and close. Then we get what? Why do you always 
mess me up. Right. Yeah. We are doing the control of love. Let me show that it's coming from here. Alright. Which is that. Right. So that this variable gives you access to the properties of the object. Right. Which is inside here, which is the first name, email address, and then last name. Right. And it even gives you access to the function itself. All right, you can call this function again here. This one here. Hold on. Ah. Anyway, what is this thing? Maximum form. All right. What it quite the reason why it is um, giving you this error is that it is calling itself over and over and over again. So it's enters into an infinite loop. What I mean by infinite loop is that like it doesn't stop calling itself. Right, so the browser will automatically detect that. And this, um, uh, how do you call it? The function is an infinite loop, so it will call it a maximum number of times until that is into an error, so that you can have your control of your browser back. And then finally, your browser will crash. So it's an inbuilt method that you probably do, but you can. Prevent situation by let's say you can say from what you say that it doesn't enter into an infinite loop, but it will repeat the same question over and over again if you answer it. Let's say that comes up again. Right. You usually will use something like this when you are dealing with say a quiz. Right, where you are asking the person over and over again. So, if let's say you can see that, let's say, um, and this don't try to understand. Right. Let's say if answer uh, is not equals to, let's say, um, wait, let's say. Assume that pass is the right answer for a quiz, right? So if I write anything to different from that, oh come on. Ah, it should not call itself again, but I don't have that. Anyway. Alright, but let us not distract. So you have access to the, this variable control of the Alright. Oh, shit. It has entered into an infinite loop, but you have to close this browser and open it again. You understand what I'm doing? So far, so far, huh? So far, what? So good or so bad? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you can say um, user dot full name equals to the access that this variable, right? So we know that if that this variable is an object, right? We can use the dot notation to get the zero property. Right, so you can say this dot first name and the dot pass. Yes, I like that. Alright, then we agreed the last time that assuming this is one user you are creating. Come on. User. So, user 
one that gets to the point that you just get to the end. You are stuck. Yeah. Right. So if we have a million users with objects to create, right? That means we have to rewrite all of this how many times? A million times. This is too much work. So as a programmer, what you're trying to prevent is to prevent a situation where you have to repeat yourself. So we introduce the concept of function body. Function what? No. Function constructors. So with function constructor, it's like a blueprint that you would have to you will use to create various objects. How then do you do that? Well, usually the convention is var a big user, which is a function. Obviously, this is coming from what? The word function word. Constructor. So it is a function that creates a blueprint of which you create other objects. You understand? So we have a function like this. But then, in creating these various objects, the common denominator here is what? The first name, last name, email, and what? You get email. Right? So then, you create it by saying that um, you will always will pass your first name, you will always pass your last name, and then, for now, and then an email address. But the get full name is just a method on the various properties. On the various objects, right? Are you following? Are you sure? Alright. So we implement this method later, but for now let us stick to how do you call it? The properties first. Alright. So we can see this dot um, first. It gives you access to its this variable, right? So we say this dot first name equals to the first name that you are passing. How do we use this function constructor? Alright. We say we can use it by say using how then do we create objects with this function constructor? Use a bar keyword and then usually we find as an instance of usually when you're creating an object, right, from the function constructor, right? You are creating an instance of that particular object. Let's say for instance, if you are you are John, right? You are an instance of a human being. Alright, so you usually would use let's say let's say person, right? Let's say person one. One. Right? You use the new keyword and then the user variable which you created here. Right. Then you pass the various properties that this requires. You need what? First name, John, last name, John. object with what? The various properties in them. You get it? Yeah. Right. We can create another person too by doing bar person two equals the new. We have to use the new keyword. Right. Later we'll explain what this new keyword does. But you use the new keyword with the user um, how do you call it? Constructor, function constructor, the user function constructor, which is we created here, right? Then you pass the various properties that you will need. You need the first, let's say, your name, David, and then last name. How do you implement the method there? Right? You can implement it two ways. Right? You 
you can say um, user dot get to name equals the function. Get it? I call it. write it here. I didn't write it in this function. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be here. This dot get full name equals to the function. Alright. And let this function log this. I follow. We are saying this dot get full name is a function of that particular word object. Right? So if we console dot log one right you see that we have the get full name in here as word function. Right? Which console dot log what the this variable. So in the case of person one the this variable which is the constructor points to what um, how do you call it this particular object which has a first name of John and a last name of Joe we know that from here I call it alright so if we do console log person two it points to the this variable first points to what person 2, which is what? David Amor. Okay, so we can say that, okay, in this particular method, return this console from that method, console dot log, this dot first name, and this dot what? Last name. Do you understand? Alright, so if we say um, person 1 dot get And we see that this is not an efficient way of having to implement methods. Why? Because um, in each instance, let's say console.log person one. The get full name method is created as part of its property. But then again, if you open this one, right, the methods are always, or the user are always stored in its word. Nope. Uh, Great. So if you are always stored in the prototype, then it will make sense for us to also add our S word there. Right? So we can take this one out. Then we say, user that the big user. Situation why it's important to put this in the prototype from there. You understand? Correct. Okay. Um, you know about how to put prototype. Alright. So, up until this point, you understand the prototype chain that when you do um, person one dot get two, okay, what happens is that it goes to we 
see auto dot lock person one does get full name right which is this person one here right it goes through all of its prototype to see if it will find the um, method that you are calling right and then it will perform that particular method for you whatever task you have assigned to it right okay so from there we spoke about um how do you call it the scope chain Saying X is undefined. I have defined X as so. Mm. Like I explained, during the um, execution phase of your browser, right, it will create the variable object first. And when it creates the variable object, what it will, it will do is that it will scan for all your variable declaration with function declaration, right? With variable declaration, it first will set it to what? Right. Before eventually it will do anything for you. But at this point, we are calling the test function, right? Before we are setting it. So it's at this point, it's sort of like performing something like this var x and then. Like at this point, it knows of the whereabouts of x, but it doesn't know exactly its value yet because we have called the test function first before setting it. So if we should call the test function after this, then we get what 10. Do you understand? It's the same thing as writing bar. Doing the object declaration of the variable, creating of the variable object, all it does is that it scans for a hold for a variable declaration first, and then if you have called the method to 
console.log it already well and that was this what undefined before you are setting it to what 10. Let's do another example. So let's say var um, x equals to 10, var y equals to x, x equals to 20. Then we have a function that goes log y. And we say nothing happened. Let's call the function here. What be the value of y? Okay. Awesome. Probably value of Sort of uh, log y because that's why I didn't read the function before the variable. So it is not defined. Mm. Right. So, but first, what you should always the key word is um, variable. Right. The parser will create variable of the please stands for what. function here and still you will not get an error. Assuming you have to do this. Unexpected to kill. Yeah. Do you understand? Oh, don't keep this one. So even though uh, line ten, uh, line ten, even though you have the function key ready, it's the variable. Yeah, it's a function expression. He doesn't know about it till he gets to this line. It reads from top to down. Right. But first, what to do is to scan for what variable declaration and object the yeah, variable declaration and function declaration. This is an expression. It's 
but uh, the declaration is where it is. to work whether you put it you put this one here right. but the first thing is that the password does is that it will scan for what no there's another keyword to so scan for variable It doesn't matter if it's a function expression. You do these two things first before you start reading from top to down. All right. So at this point, it won't set the value of you know what up there. You know that with variables, it won't set the value first. So we'll set it to what before it will start reading your code. Even if you at this point you could you set it equals to what ten. No, it doesn't matter. To read, to set to undefined first, look for all of your variable declaration. And you mean they have another bar to set equals to 100, and bar w equals to 300. Right. But all that it will do is to scan through your code, all of them, read, look out for your variable, and set it to work. Right. Before it will start reading from top to down again. And at this point, you'll be like, ah, okay. Depending on whether you call this function, here or here. So at this point now you start reading from top to down. So at this point you say, ah, okay, you are saying it is 10, okay, it is equals to, so and you change it to 20, and you are saying this is that, and you are saying this. Okay, now you see I should call the test function. Right? But I know that from top to down, when I was reading it from top to down, right, you've changed your values to what? 10. 20 that right but if I should call it here after reading my variable declarations and then function declaration now you are calling the what right before you set all of them again so at this point through my variable um, declaration and function declaration knowledge right I know that my variables are all what thank you you get it All right, so there's something I wanted to call, talk about. Um, at least over speeding. For over speeding. Beta. <laughs> right. Beta privacy in JavaScript. All right. I just say we have a function. What if we did this? Ah! Alright, but what if we did this?
Ghana was called by Bill under 17 or under 21. Mm. Uh, Aisha. Are you fine? Yeah. Anyway. Why? Because this is a function expression. And we pass it this part. Alpha doesn't know about this till it gets to this point in the code. Because now we are following a function before declaring it. But we know that in the situation of if we were to be a function declaration, right? We will even know about the code first before it will start running. Yeah, sir. Let me see if you could clearly answer. this thing I find it like it's kind of a Variable declares what happens. It knows about the function, everything about the function. Now. It doesn't set anything to undefined. But I'll talk about something that happens. It's only the variable declaration that sets to undefined. Right. Huh? Hundred. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because uh, if you set um, because you if you set the variable to undefined, then you lose about the function. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Exactly. So what happens when I? 
So the difference between this and this is that before the, the parser, right, ran the code, right, it will look for what? First create the variable object and do what? And uh, set it to undefined. The variable. Right. And what else? And, 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 and fetch for the function declaration. Right. So between this one and this one, which one would you do first? The function declaration. Right. So at this point, it doesn't know about what? The function expression. So it will keep this one in memory before it will start running the function. I mean, running your code if it is a declaration. So even if you call it first, watch where I call the function or I invoke the function. These are the top of before even declaring the function, or it is after I have declared the function. So if it is after I have declared the function, what type of function is it? Is it a function expression or a declaration? If it is after the the um, if it is an expression, right? And I save it, and it is before at the expression. Oh, come on. Before it is the expression, right? It doesn't know about it. At this point, it's before the expression, so it, it doesn't know about it. It's only, it only does two things first, then it will scan it one after the other. So at this point, it has done my variable declaration and what function declaration, right? Those two things. So now it doesn't know about any other thing again, right? Now I'm calling the test. It doesn't know about you, right? But in this particular case, if I comment on this, Take out, bring this one back. Right. First of all, it will scan for what variable declaration and of a function what declaration. Is this a function declaration? Yeah. Right. So it will keep this in memory. Then it will start scanning my code, reading my code one after the other. So at this point, when it starts invoking this function, it already knows the existence of what. Right. So it doesn't matter where I place the function. I put it here, what? I put it here, what? But the only problem is with when it is and what? Expression. The expression, the calling of the function, when it's done expression, is the calling of the function should only come after you have written the function expression. I can't put it here. can't do that. Because at this point, when it is reading here, I'm calling test. It doesn't know about test at this point. I have to know about you before you can call you. That's what the as I say. All right? At this point, if it were to be an, a, a declaration, well, I would have done that. I've done that already. So I know you in mind. It's like an experience. Do your mind inside. All right? So if I'm using the function expression, I can only invoke the thing function after I have declared that function. Do you understand? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Let's go by it again. So function test. I only get this function if I call it. Right. What type of function is this? Right. What will be my output? What will be my output? Why? Because it's a function declaration. It already knows how the function declaration is. So if I do this function, Because um, it's an expression that's ready 
now, now that I start to get ready, you know some other expression before. Okay. So what if I put it? Explain why it is like that. Because uh, in order um, the, the process of function declaration and, and, and variable declaration, it says the variable declaration is not defined, but it knows about the function declaration. So when you really read the, the code, then you start with um, function. So you start with function, but I didn't say it. So you start with Same principle you are using in, in this one. Alright? In the creation of every function, right, the same principle applies. So means the variable should come before the console. Right, so yeah. You understand? When you call this function, right, what happens is that you pass a create a new word, a new execution context. In the creation of an execution context, right, it then creates another variable object. And what, what do we store in the variable object? Output 
Germany's got people. It's all an error. Why? Because when you create this var x equals to 10, it is only available to only variable in this execution context. You cannot access it outside the scope of this function. The scope of this function is anything that is written in the function from here to here. Okay. You cannot access it outside the function. But assuming you put it here, say you get 10. But if we put it in here, you get 25. So we say this x variable is private to what? The test function. You cannot access it outside the function. Do you understand? So if you have another variable here, now w equals to 100, and you do another function of y, or b as error y. So if I say var y equals to an OBDR, yeah. why? Because the variable uh, var y is only the function. Okay. Right. So in terms of function, right? All the variables or properties or methods in the particular functions are only private to the particular function. Right. So let's say I have a, another function declaration here. Well, this check function is only private to what? Test. test function. So I can't call it outside of what? Test function. Test function. Because of where it is positioned logically in our what? code. You get it? And then the scope chain leads to what? Upward. So these are three things you should Where am I calling the function from? What is it private to that particular function? Or is it public? If I'm to take this one out here, you can put it here. Alright, and save it. Then I can call it. So the only place I can call this particular function is oh come on. Is what? Inside the word. Test function. Alright. So that means I have to call the test function first the test function first, which is outside, which is actually the main function, all right, before I can call the check, which is inside this one. So in calling of the test function, what it does is repeat the same procedure. It creates a variable object, I mean the variable object, what are we storing? The variable declaration. And what? Right. Right. So the same thing applies. So in this case, what type of function is this? Right. So if I can make a mistake and do this equals to, uh, if I should do this, 
delete this. Delete this one. Yeah, swap it. First of all, double function. is to know what type of function it is. All right. This is an expression. You should know that you should can only call an expression after you have declared it. You said specifically that it is this, this, this. That is why I'm calling this. But if you're calling it before you declare it, then it should be what? A function word. What? Great. Okay, so if I can only call this one, I get an error. Right. So then I can only fix this by doing this. In terms of privacy, this check function is private to what? Right. Okay. But look at something. We can say we call a function by writing opening and closing of what? Right. Okay. Then can we do something like this? What would the output of this code? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> right. So wait. Good. Great. So if I do um my test function. How do I get this code to work? What will be the value of this code? What will be the output of this code? Good. How will be the output of this code? Good. So, this is a function word. Okay. So, in essence, a function expression is going to work. Like this. But it is a saving word. This is how a function expression is written. It means if I do this, what? Don't get confused. I beg you. <laughs> if I do this, wait. I go on. Great, what else? So what will be the output of this code? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no. Wait. I have not called the function. Wait. Let's go right there. If I say I can only 
think I just found somebody to do better. Alright? Yes. Alright? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Good. Alright. All of this is what? Equals to what? What? Five. No, equals to all of this. Alright? Okay. So it means, in essence, it is this function. And we have done this. If you have to look at this. Alright? Right? Yeah. Okay. So if I take out this can I rewrite all of this? <laughs> right. So this is immediately okay. get it. So if this is that I right. Can't you look to if he's lying? Huh, interesting. Don't call it like a battery, but we'll talk about it later. Right, so this will be what? Okay. Alright. So, um, can I do it? You 
you got dead tech. Here's the tricky part. Alright. If I say What's up, Nabi? So if I break the code here, what do I put on this code? This function, particularly, this function returns this total, which is stored in what? Y. But if you don't bring the return this total, you get what? Undefined. Alright, so what we can see from here is that we can return what? A variable from a function. from this particular function. You can do total y dot total. Y dot y. Y dot so you can either return just a variable or what? An object. 
In this particular case, right, if you have to look at this particular code, right, that is this sum, right, which is this, right, which is returning a function, which is this, passing this parameter, which is num, right. So the total of this is multiplied by the number that you are passing here. You don't understand it, right? And then that gives you 204. Right. So what we know is that we can return with just a variable or object, or we can return with function. You get it. Why then? Why did I take all of these things to explain it to you? Okay. Um, if we uncomment this one. access
I confusing myself? Yeah, return name is equal to this particular. It's only when I do. I'm returning that. Okay.